This is a related segment to the ICC seeking arrest warrants against uh, Netanyahu and Defense Minister Yov Gallant. Um, Matthew Miller was at the podium speaking on the State Department's behalf. And uh, obviously, the Biden White House and the Biden Department of State strongly disagrees with this ICC warrant. And so a journalist asked Matthew Miller, OK, so if you think this is an abuse of their jurisdiction, uh, what recourse do the Palestinian people have if they're being war crimed? Pretty fair question, I think. Let's see this exchange. Momentarily stunned by your original answers. I, I forgot my question. Oh, Count Morlock. Brief. Yep. So are you OK, then, with the um, application for arrest warrants against Hamas? Uh, we do not believe that they have jurisdiction over either of the parties of this so conflict. You don't and that, and that Hamas, includes Hamas. You don't think that Hamas we leaders should be prosecuted? We absolutely believe that Hamas should be held accountable. That could uh, be held hold accountable. on. Let me let me, let me okay. finish. That could be either through the prosecution of the war effort by Israel. It could be in other it, words, hold on. being me, killed. Me, it could be by being killed. It could by being be, it could be by being brought to justice in an Israeli court. We do not believe the ICC has jurisdiction over either of the parties in this case because the Palestinian people do not represent a state. Okay. That includes the, the leaders of Wait, the I, But obviously the administration is also troubled by actions that Israel has taken post-October 7th. So where, do, where, where is the accountability for that? Where do the Palestinians go? This is a question I asked Matt, I mean uh, Ned, a, a long time ago, over and over and over again. Where do the Palestinians go to seek redress so let me where do the palestinians go to seek redress great question i love this guy he's like an old school reporter he's got his notepad yeah. and his pen and yeah. his glasses very kind yeah. of hard-nosed scrappy kind of way about him yeah this guy's yeah. great and that's a he's great a, question he's a, he's a throwback to when reporters work their way up from the press room exactly yeah yeah exactly this guy is not somebody's nephew like this guy actually right. got where he is the old-fashioned way matt i mean uh, ned a long time ago over and over and over again where do the Palestinians go to seek redress? So let me answer this a, a couple of different ways. Um, first of all, in the short term, with respect to questions of war crimes, Israel does have open investigations, uh, a number of open investigations. We uh, made this public when we released our report on National Security Memo 20, including some investigations that have become criminal investigations into conduct by members of the IDF. That is the first instance for, for judging um, whether someone has committed uh, a war crime or a violation of IDF uh, uh, code of conduct. That's one of the reasons why we have concerns about the ICC. The ICC is set up to be a court of last resort if a country isn't properly holding itself and its personnel accountable. That's when the ICC comes in. Not in and that's now. What do you mean? If a country isn't holding itself accountable, that's when the ICC steps in as a last resort. This has been going on for seven months, and you have d but done nothing but stonewall these journalists when they ask for follow-ups. Hey, any follow-up on why they hit the Jabalia refugee camp, killing over 100 people for the one Hamas commander that they said was there? We get no follow-ups to any of this. So, like, yeah, obviously the ICC is set up for when countries don't hold themselves accountable, like Israel, right? right. And like the United States, even though we do not acknowledge them. He goes on. In the middle of the process, as they, ha as they have done Oh, here. they're in the middle of the process. That's it. Oh. Ultimately... And you know this, Matt, and because we've spoken about it a lot. We believe that there should be the establishment of an independent Palestinian state. And an independent Palestinian state would have the ability to join the Rome Statute and uh, uh, become a member of the International Criminal Court, as every state in the, the world okay. has the right to do. But that's, but that's, as cited in the NPR uh, uh, article, okay, okay, the Palestinian okay. territories granted the ICC jurisdiction over their territories nine years ago well, well not only that the u.s is blocking u.n acknowledgement of the palestinians as a full member of the u.n that too. Me, me, uh, spain amongst other countries are about to recognize palestine as a nation yes that too that's, but, but that's not, but that is that is SOL. not that is I not mean, no well, that, no they're, so, they're, so they're, where do they go in the meantime? they are not so I said first of all the Israel has its own investigations second we have uh, accountability mechanisms here we have uh, okay so they can come to Israel and the United States for their complaints that's what you're saying so where do the Palestinians go if they are being criminally persecuted bombarded genocided uh, to what body can they mm. have their grievances heard? 
his to, answer to, to the people genociding them or to the people funding their genocide. Yeah, that's literally his answer. That is his answer. There's the, the, like the scene art. in the in the Gandhi movie where the British general and this was this was a historical uh, massacre at a at a rally. Uh, the judge asks him why they opened fire on the crowd and what provisions they had made for the injured. And he says, I was prepared to assist any who applied. That's that's mm. what this is. You're yeah. you're 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 they're supposed to come to their murderers for help. Yeah. Yep. Indeed. That's what he's saying. Has its own investigation. Second, we have uh, accountability mechanisms here. We have uh, processes that are ongoing to look at Israel's compliance with international humanitarian law. So there are places to look at these questions. It's just in our in our view, fundamentally not a role of the ICC. And I should say, but. So it's right. fundamentally not the role of a neutral body to adjudicate questions of war crimes, genocide, international law. A question like this is better handled by subjective actors like the country doing the war crime and the country paying the country to do the war crime. That's literally what you're saying. We don't think you need a neutral court to answer these questions. We think might makes right and that we should yeah. be allowed to answer these questions or Israel should be allowed to answer these questions. Well, and they didn't they didn't feel that way about Russia, which no. is also not a signatory to the Rome statutes. Yep. Yep. No, they were right out within a week. They were saying Putin needs to be arrested by the ICC and a warrant did come down, which we supported. Yeah. We have a jurisdictional complaint here and that we don't believe the ICC has jurisdiction. But if you looked at, at the statement the secretary made that I echoed my opening remarks, that isn't our only problem with the action the prosecutor has taken. We also have a problem that he has short-circuited in invest, an investigation uh, and brought this action without waiting to see where these Israeli investigations end up, without completing the trip that he had planned to come to Israel to look into these mm -hmm. questions. So it's not just a question of jurisdiction, okay. it's so also who, a question of the does... way the investigation has right, been conducted. Well, so... Okay, first, I'll, well, I wanna get his response to that. But that is just obscene on a whole other level. They're short-circuiting the investigation. You guys have been stalling for seven months. What? You, but by short-circuiting, you mean actually moving forward as opposed to stalling and stonewalling and bullshitting? Short-circuiting means actually doing it, right? Well, the, 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 this is the logic of an abuser. Yeah. Well, hey, you just made it worse. Now I'm going to have to beat you worse. Yep. Yep. So let's just focus on jurisdiction for a second. Who does have jurisdiction here? So the government of Israel has uh, jurisdiction. Over we have, right we have jurisdiction over, over Gaza, which is not we entirely. Have, they occupied. have jurisdiction into looking at at uh, the actions okay. by their so military the personnel. Okay. So if they we, have a complaint, they have to bring it to Israeli we, courts. They, we have jurisdiction, and we ha uh, have uh, with jurisdiction? the use of our equipment. I'm sorry. With the, how do you have with the use of our military equipment Matt, that we how, have provided? How do you have jurisdiction? If you look at the Leahy law, if you look at look, that, that's, uh, that's not jurisdiction in a criminal process. That's not in a criminal over, process, but it has to do with a the determinations that we make and the policies that flow yeah, but from it. Yes, but this is a criminal process. The Leahy Law says we cannot fund a government that is right. committing gross yeah, yeah. human rights violations. That's a and, policy and, question. And, and, and yet we continue to fund Israel so clearly well, this, that law yeah. is not worth the paper it's written on. Well, this is why they stall and say we have not determined they violated international right, law because right. of the Leahy law. But the Leahy law affects the funding. That affects the policy right, of the right. United States towards Israel. That it's does not, not criminal address liability. Criminal yeah. liability. Exactly. Exactly. So good on this guy for being right on that. Like, don't try and fucking spin this bullshit answer Leahy law. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about criminal liability for criminal acts. Equipment? I'm sorry. With the, how do you have with the use of our military equipment Matt, that we how, have provided? How do you have jurisdiction? If you look at the Leahy law, if you look at no, that, that's, uh, it, that's not jurisdiction in a criminal process. That's not in a criminal over... process, but it has to do with uh, the determinations that we make and the policies that flow yeah, but from that's it. Not jurisdiction. So, but Matt, long term, you were right that we you want to see. You used to work for DOJ, you, Matt. You were on. Uh, there, there's it no is, U.S. It does is not, not have jurisdiction. There are here. different. I wasn't referring to criminal jurisdiction, Matt. There are different ways to look at this. Long term, we agree with you that the Palestinian. It's a criminal court. What do you mean there are different ways to look at this? The question before the world right now is Benjamin Netanyahu guilty of war crimes? That's, that's the question.
That's the question. So what do you, t I mean, the level of obfuscation and deflection is just disgusting. I mean, how shameless are these people that they can go up there and say that and think they're going to slip one past this guy but talking about the Leahy Law, which is about funding, not about criminality. It has nothing to do with what he asked. Uh, well, 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 but they are going to get away with it. They're going to get away with it with their target audience. Yes. They, yep. they, you know, they just have to throw out some line of bullshit that Joe and Mika can run with. Right. Right. And the irony of this is it's all a stall tactic. This guy's talking about they're short circuiting these processes. That's like you pay a contractor to paint your house. He doesn't show up for work for two weeks. Somebody else comes in and paint the house. How dare he short circuit my, my work? You're not doing anything. You're, there, there's no follow through. There's no follow up. There is no progress. Uh, well, well, in well, that, any of these yeah, that's a, that's that that's my favorite argument. Uh, it's it's going to stall a ceasefire. I mean that that is really the argument of an abuser. Well, don't don't try to defend yourself. Don't try to improve your situation because it's going to be worse for you. It's going to be worse for you. I'm going to have to beat you worse. You're going to get beat longer. If you try to get away from this beating, don't try to run from me when I beat you. Right. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's exactly just it's it it's 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 monstrous and it's no surprise. I haven't seen an update on this poll, but I would imagine the numbers would be worse. Uh, last I heard, you ask people around the world which country is the greatest threat to peace in the world. They don't say Russia. They don't say China. They say the United States, not by a small margin, overwhelmingly. They say well, that, the United States. And clearly, when you look at what we're involved in, when you look at what we're doing, there's no other country that even comes close to our responsibility for murder, violence, uh, genocide, uh, anti-democratic uh, government installations, the overthrow of democratic governments. Um, we are, as Caitlin Johnston will often point out, we're the most propagandized people on earth. Like most Americans cannot wrap their heads around the idea that we are the baddies. We are the bad guys. We, yeah, that doesn't mean other countries are perfect. I've spoken out against some of our geopolitical rivals. I've made the argument the United States being bad doesn't make other places good and spotless and, and worthy of admiration on every level. Uh, not every criticism of any country outside the United States is a State Department op. Um, but that having been said, the sins of any country outside of the United States are, are minor, minor, when you look at the actual human suffering caused by a nation. No other nation is anywhere close to the U.S.'s bloody record. Please clap.